We're back with another episode of Who's Your Myths and Legends. I'm Rebecca Wilhelm. I'm Mary Quigley. And I'm Hope Wilhelm. Join us as we dive into the spookier side of the Hoosier State. So what comes to your mind when you think of Indiana? Do you think of corn? Do you think of basketball? Do you think of the Indianapolis 500? Maybe you think of famous celebrities who were born in Indiana, like John Mellencamp or Michael Jackson. But as the saying goes, there was more than corn in Indiana. 92 counties make up the Hoosier State. In this podcast, we are going to discuss some Indiana folklore from each of these counties. If you are into tall tales, ghosts, or spooky legends, then this is a podcast you are not going to want to miss. Welcome back for Season 4 of the Hoosier Myths and Legends podcast. Thanks for sticking by us as we took a long break to write our book. Haunted Dearborn County, Indiana is available for pre-order on Amazon. The book officially releases on August the 14th. Please see the show notes for more information on how to purchase your copy. In this episode, we bring you a legend from New Albany, Indiana. High above the hillside of Highway 111 stands an ominous pyramid-shaped vault. Since 1857, this place has been steeped in legend and whispered tales of the supernatural. This was constructed to be the final resting place for Captain Francis McCary. The Captain's Vault, as it's now come to be known, is a place where the curse of Captain McCary is said to still haunt the living. So turn off the lights, grab a blanket, and get ready to hear the bone-chilling history behind the legendary curse of the Captain's Vault. first hope has decided to take a little break from the podcast for right now she's focusing on school and cheerleading right now and she's actually going to be starting cosmetology school this summer so she's just taking a little break from the for the time being and she may join us on a future episode for the time being it will just be becky and i but we have a great season planned and we have a very interesting tale for you today the curse of captain mccary's vault I could not wait to talk about this legend. Me either. I was so excited when we stumbled upon this old legend, and it has a really neat history to it. Listeners be warned, this isn't a typical historical site. No, not at all. I think it's pretty well known that a lot of superstitions surround maritime activities. Yeah, I think it's pretty well known that sailors and sea and river captains and even ship crew, they're just known to be very superstitious. There are a lot of superstitions surrounding ships. The one that I thought about right away is the old saying about the red sunrise. Yes, a red sunrise means that a storm is coming and it's dangerous, so you better not travel out onto the water. As the saying goes, red sky at night, sailors delight. Red sky in the morning, sailors take warning. Yeah, there are a few different versions of that legend out there. The one I've always heard was red sky at night, just sailors delight. According to Wikipedia, there is also a version that says, Red sky at morn, sailors be warned. Other than that saying, I've always heard rumors about bad luck or there's curses that are associated with ships. Apparently, it's considered unlucky to start a trip by ship on Friday. Well, in Christianity, Fridays are unlucky because that was the day that Jesus was crucified. The Royal Navy in the 19th century wanted to prove that the rumors of setting sail on Friday being unlucky were untrue. There was also the legend about a ship called the HMS Friday. So they decided to commission a ship that they would name the HMS Friday. 
According to legend, the ship was built on a Friday, launched on a Friday, and set sail on her maiden voyage on, you guessed it, a Friday. But the unluckiest of all to them was that it was not just an ordinary Friday that this ship sailed out. Oh, no. They set sail on Friday the 13th. According to the legend, HMS Friday was never seen or heard from again. Very creepy. There are many superstitions involving the shipping industry. According to many online sources, um, having a banana on a private ship, a yacht, or even on your fishing boat, it's considered to be unlucky. And I had never heard that one before. It's thought that a boat with bananas will not catch fish. Well, the Ohio River has been a very important route to get goods and resources to communities since the 1800s. This means there have been lots of ships that have traveled down the Ohio, and it continues to be an important means to get goods across the country. And if you find yourself traveling down the Ohio River in the Louisville, Kentucky, and New Albany, Indiana area, you better hope that the captain of the ship you're traveling on remembers to blow his whistle when he passes Captain Francis McCary's tomb. If this is not done, the captain's curse says that you'll meet your end on the Ohio River. So who was Captain McCary? Francis McCary was a ferryboat captain who operated on the Ohio River during the mid-19th century. He ran a ferryboat from New Albany, Indiana to Portland, Kentucky in the 1850s. McCary was born in 1805 and he was the son of an Irish immigrant. McCary was raised in southern Indiana along the Ohio River and had a love of the river from a young age. McCary was well known for having what's been described as a fiery temper, according to the historic photos of New Albany, Indiana website. He was well known to get into arguments and had what has been described as a volatile relationship with the other steamboat and ship captains of his day. Well, some speculate that others may have been jealous of his success in regards to shipping. He was quite successful at a young age, started off by working construction on shipping sites along the Ohio River as a teenager and a young adult. We will be back after a short break. Hey, everyone. If you haven't heard the news already, we wrote a book. Haunted Dearborn County, Indiana is coming to all major retailers August 14th, 2023. Strange and unusual things lurk behind the calm facade of Dearborn County. Several legends surround the Hill Forest Mansion, the home of one of Aurora's founding families. Many have seen the ghost of a farmer and his mule at Carnegie Hall in Morse Hill. The glowing grave at Riverview Cemetery may connect to the 1941 Agru family massacre. St. Mary's Church Rectory is said to be haunted by the former priest, and the spirits at Whiskey's in Lawrenceburg are not just in the drinks. Several schools in the area echo with the sounds of former students and staff, and numerous local residences house the spirits of former owners who have never left. Join Rebecca and I on a chilling tour from Lawrenceburg to Lawrenceville and beyond. Haunted Dearborn County, Indiana is available for pre-order. Check out HoosierMissingLegends.com for more details. Apparently, McCary worked as a toll operator, and in the 1840s, he became a partner in a company in southern Indiana that was a producer of cemented flour and lime, which is kind of an interesting combo. And I've not been able to find out much about the company other than its name, and it was called the J. Hume and Company. But the biggest venture and what McCary became known for is when he was able to buy a ferry boat business. Well, McCary bought the Portland New Albany Ferry in 1850. This route traveled the Ohio River between New Albany, Indiana, and Portland, Kentucky. Steamboat travel on the Ohio River was extremely important in the 1800s. According to the Ohio History Central website, Farmers and manufacturers sent their crops and finished products on flatboats and barges downstream to the Mississippi River and eventually on to New Orleans. While well, all of the steamboat travel upset McCary. Legend says that he was very upset about the disturbances that these big boats would cause on the river. These large ships would create what's known as wakes and it would upset McCary's ferry boat. 
Now, wakes can be dangerous, so I could see why this would upset him so much. McCary is said to have become very hostile towards the steamboat captains. He was sick and tired of the big boats causing animals and people on his ferry to be afraid. In fact, his hostile temper and argumentative nature was so well known by the steamboat captains in the area. And there are two differing accounts of how Captain McCary died. Depending on who you speak to, you may hear that he was killed by being stabbed during an altercation with another steamboat captain in 1857. Other accounts say he was very hard on his crew. He was a difficult man to work for and that his crew basically formed a mutiny and that they shot him to death on the ferry. Before his death, he had the pyramid-shaped tomb built. His wish was to be able to watch over the Ohio River that he loved so much. We will be back with more after a short break. Our podcast is growing, and it's so exciting to see all of our new followers on social media and all of the many downloads of our podcast. Most of our listeners come from iHeartRadio. However, we are on all the major podcast platforms. If you like what you hear, please don't forget to give us a five-star rating on whatever podcast platform you're listening to us through. Your comments and likes help others find us. Thank you for tuning in to the Hoosier Myths and Legends podcast. Now back to our show. So after his 1857 death, McCary was placed in the vault. According to local legend, McCary's last request was to be placed in the vault standing up. This was so that he could look out of the portal in the vault and curse all the boats that passed by. After captains of ships passing by would blow their horns in honor of Captain McCary. Many ship captains feared that if they didn't sound their horn, then the curse of the old captain would surely find them. So the curse of the captain of Captain McCary supposedly says that anyone who dares to pass the vault without sounding their horn will meet their end on the Ohio River. For 40 years, Captain McCary's wish was granted and his body was entombed in the vault in such a way that he could gaze out and keep watch of the Ohio River. However, in 1897, the captain's remains were moved so that he could be with his wife, Emily, who had passed in 1888 and was buried in a tomb in Cave Hill Cemetery in Louisville, Kentucky. Side note, Cave Hill has some famous residents. Yeah, it really does. So this is interesting, but Colonel Sanders, you know, KFC Colonel Sanders, George Rogers Clark, and Muhammad Ali are all buried there. Road trip. I'm in. While McCary's remains may be in Louisville, but many locals feel his spirit's still there along the Ohio River. There are many reports of seeing the apparition of the old captain walking in the area of the vault. People have claimed to have heard the voice of the captain near the vault, still cursing out the ships that pass in front of the tomb today. For example, the Delta Queen and other ships will turn passengers' attention to Captain McCary's tomb while passing. Traditionally, the ships will blow their horns and tell the story of the legendary Captain McCary fearing that they will meet their end on the Ohio just as the old captain promised if they don't. And listeners, please note, this vault is located on private property, so it's not accessible to the public without permission from the landowner. Have you ever had an experience at the captain's vault? Are you familiar with Captain McCary's curse? We would love to hear about it. Please send us an email to whosyourmissinglegends at gmail.com or reach out to us on social media. We may use it in a later episode. In the email, let us know if you wish to remain anonymous.
To see our source material, please visit our website, HoosierMissandLegends.com. Please find us and follow us on Facebook or Instagram. Hoosier Myths and Legends podcast is a Quigley Virtual Services production. Our theme song was written and recorded by Wet Blanket. The song title is Taxidermy Race Car. As always, stay spooky.